EA released its presentation deep dive for NHL 24, and we're gonna break it down. If you guys have never heard of me, I've making NHL content on YouTube for over 10 years now, and the last month I got to sit down with the lead presentation producer at NHL, David Pritchett, where we talked about all the new features and changes to the upcoming game. Good to see my man Tactics get some love doing the presentation deep dive. He has been doing franchise mode videos for a long time. Now my first question was about the new hype moments feature and how it makes all the arenas in game come alive. We've really uh, kind of expanded out what we call, at least under the hood, the crowd engagement score or the CES. So there's positive events, there's negative events. And as you kind of build up positive events, it really gets the home crowd uh, kind of riled up. If you're someone who enjoys playing like franchise mode and things like that, and you were looking for a more traditional experience when it comes to hockey, this is a pretty big plus as long as they remain authentic like for example if you're playing in buffalo and they say go buffalo go instead of let's go buffalo that would be a pretty big miss and the next feature i'm really excited for in hl24 is the new creation zone environment basically this is where you are whenever you're creating your player creating your team and a cool feature they added this year is the ability to create 30 more teams, 1,500 more skaters, and 200 more goalies than previous years. So. so this is going to be one of the more underrated things that are talked about today. And it's for a very small portion of the community. But I think uh, creators like Snipe and Score or Tactics or Tugi that make crazy in-depth rosters. And thanks to roster sharing, we can download them. This will give them the freedom to make just absolutely huge rosters that include European players, every prospect that you can imagine so again for a lot of the player base this is probably not going to mean anything but if you download one of the more in-depth rosters you're going to see some people really take advantage of this which again will lead to a better experience for franchise mode players now we get a look at more of the premium things it looks like being added to the battle pass for world of shell i'm not huge on the non-traditional hockey stuff in the equipment however that animated spider one looks sick so if they add more like that that's actually pretty cool if you are someone that plays a lot of world of shell you're definitely going to stand out if you rock something like that and a lot of work has been done on the material tuning to make the sticks as authentic as possible, the metalness, the graphite, making them look exactly right. Another big one that the fans have been asking for for a long time is you can now put a cage on any helmet whatsoever. We've got the full visor supported as well, and also uh, the skin material, not just inside of Creation Zone, but inside of the game itself. It looks better than it's ever looked before. It looks much more authentic. We spent a lot of time in the fine details of that skin shader to get it looking as authentic as possible. All right, so Bridget talks about a lot of graphical improvements Movements coming to NHL 24. The one thing that I'm starting to pick up on this is that they're really starting to leave behind old gen. And I've talked about this at nauseum. I understand a lot of people that can't get the new consoles and things like that. But for the gaming industry as a whole, there hasn't ever been a time in which they've held on to the prior generation's consoles as long as they have with PS4 and PS5 and Xbox One and Series X. And if you go back, just looking at the NHL franchise, if you go back and look at PlayStation 1 era and the second they go to PlayStation 2, and the same thing when they go from PlayStation 2 to PlayStation 3, it's like this holy smokes moment. And we haven't had that at all. PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 look awfully similar. So I'm hoping that this is going to lead to more graphical improvements because it looks like they're starting to just go all in on new gen. And what has to be the most drastic change of presentation this year's game, guys, is the new Flex Moments. No longer are you celebrating from your regular camera angle, but you're actually up close and personal now on your player. I'll have Pritchett tell you the thought process behind that change. Previous years, we've allowed the user to celebrate, but it's always just been from the gameplay camera. So you're kind of just a few pixels celebrating on the screen. And if you look at, you know, any images on Twitter, Instagram, whatever, of your favorite player celebrating, it's always like down low and up close and you can kind of see the full body and the face, they're usually screaming kind of thing. Uh, we needed to capture that. So in offline modes like franchise and uh, play now, the, the authentic modes, um, you know, we have a selection of authentic celebrations that can be chosen along with, um, signature celebrations for certain players. And then inside of Ishal, World of Chell, uh, there's 75 new celebrations that are, some of them are pretty crazy, but one thing they all have in common is that they look awesome. Uh, brand new camera, brand new lighting, and facial animation for every single one of them that is appropriate. I've talked about this in the last few videos that, uh, again, I don't know if this is because I'm getting older, but I really miss just the traditional replay system and how it would look when you watch a real hockey game. I think this might grow on me simply because I think that with the current replay system, if you're playing hockey ultimate team specifically, I think you sometimes, if you're just playing monotonously, 
easily and you're not really paying attention to, you know, the cards you're using, everything like that. You kind of just forget who you're using. And I think this might actually put a focus on each of that. So cards will stand out. Like if you're forced to watch these every single time someone scores on you and you're seeing the same card over and over again, I think that you're going to pay attention. That might lead to some more focused feedback on the cards you're using. But I really, really miss the traditional NBC broadcasts and things like that from the old NHLs. And now with Flex Moments, the other big change of presentation this year has to be the new dynamic rink boards. Obviously some controversial opinions about those. I asked Pritchett how they're going to ensure that they're not distracting for players. So this might be a bit of a hot take. I actually like the rink boards showing relevant information when you're playing the game. I think my perfect example would be when you activate full pressure in the offensive zone simply because you don't have to break eyesight. So if you're playing and you're a more competitive player, even if you're not, anytime that you have to move your eyes and your foot focus off of the actual play that's a disadvantage so when the boards light up all red you don't have to be able to read it that says full pressure you just know that you have it now as opposed to looking in the middle while the bar fills up which is again breaking contact with your actual player and the play seeing information like when the clock's ticking down to the final end of the period as well as power play information is huge along the boards because it is a lot easier to look up than it is looking down because everyone plays the game 1v1 going up screen. So if there's a delayed penalty, the empty net, so a goalie got pulled, uh, those types of things we now just put up on the boards. And users, the great thing about it is like users don't have to break focus. They don't have to take their eyes out of the game world and kind of look out an overlay or look up at the score clock. They can just kind of, they, they see it already just, just from playing. They just kind of see it out of the corner of their eye. And it's a super effective way um, to kind of communicate information and is helpful whether you've got audio or not. But definitely for people that don't have audio, it's super. All right, this one's kind of frustrating because he states that there's a focus by using the boards to help players not actually break their focus when you know, in control of the puck or trying to defend and things like that by showing relevant information on the boards. And while I totally agree, it's a great way to do that. My issue is that back in like NHL 18 or 19, when they introduced the score clock down on the bottom, I remember seeing it for the first time. And the first thing I said was when you go up screen, which everyone does, you have to break your focus and look down at the bottom. So if that's the case, allow us to put the score clock back up at the top because everything he said there about allowing players to not break focus is kind of contradicted by the fact that the score clock is on the bottom of the screen. And now regards to graphical improvements in NHL 24, there's now sweat exertion on players, which is very cool, as well as new facial animations. I asked Richard to tell us more about that feature as well as whether or not it'll be available on all consoles. All of the new heads, 22 new star heads, they're in all platforms, so Gen 4 and Gen 5, but the exertion is Gen 5 only. Uh, this year and it's a great feature but what you'll see is the exertion the players face they get more flush they get more sweaty kind of as they're out there on the ice working uh, they get back to <laughs> i don't know why but larkin hitting this like sneaky smile kills me i don't know why the bench they take a little bit of break kind of calms down a little bit they jump back on and starts all kind of all over again so it's a very cool little detail to see, especially with some of the replays that we have that get kind of up close and personal with the players. But yes, Gen 5 only this year. So again, like I was talking about a little bit earlier, it looks like they're putting more of a focus on the graphical improvements on next gen and fully taking advantage of what those consoles have to offer, which you'll get no complaints from me. Now, if you guys haven't heard yet, there's actually a new color commentator in NHL 24. It's no longer Ray Ferraro, it's now Cheryl Pounder. And I asked Richard to explain what made her the perfect choice for that role. Cheryl kind of came in at this last second audition for us and it was like, oh, she's meant to be working on this game. Well, it's incredible. You can tell that they are moving and shaking. They're getting the puck going north. They're transitioning so fast. And man, do they have their opponent on their heels. A goaltender, they have to have talent, they have to have mobility, they have to be able to track the puck, but they have to have a willingness to find it and fight for any second shot, and that's exactly what happens here. Out battling, out willing, and you make the save. New color commentator and Cheryl Pounder. I actually got to listen to a like an extended cut of her color commentary when I was at my time in EA. It's actually really good. I know most of us probably don't use commentary at all anyways, and some might miss Ray Ferraro, but she was actually really good. And now in addition to the new color commentary, guys, there's actually authentic tracks being used as part of the new face-off moments, and here you can hear Pritchett talk more about that. Face-off moments are pretty awesome. We're bringing authentic music back into the back end of the game or the actual game itself. What we're really going for is authentic emotion. So we needed those authentic tracks and we got some classic tracks like uh, Darude Sandstorm, we got Tsunami by Dubs, Fits in the Tantrum, Hand Clap, and of course we've got Cha Cha Slide as well, which everyone's going to recognize. Cool thing about those last two are that there's crowd participation.
Now my favorite presentation feature in NHL 23 had to be the all-nice projection, so I asked Pritchard whether or not we'd be getting it. So I think getting some more presentation options is obviously a positive. However, I think back to, I believe it was NHL 22, when we were supposed to get a full suite of a bunch of different home ice animations, and we just got, like, four different squads. I just think back to, like, the early NHL games where, again, as a Sharks fan, they skate out of the shark head, and other things like that. And again, I don't know if it's just nostalgia, but I feel like the people that play the game want realism when it comes to hockey. And the more I see, like, every single on-ice projection in this clip was great. The glow sticks for every single team. I've been to almost every single arena. I don't know how many teams use glow sticks. And while I think it looks visually cool in a video game, again, I can't help but just think that most of the demographic that plays the game just wants the exact thing that you get when they go to a game at that home rink. Let me know if I'm completely wrong, by the way, in the comment section. As possible. And now finally here, guys, this is a big one for franchise guys like me. I asked whether or not the offline replays were returning to NHL 24. Here's your answer. Yeah, so this year we brought back the full replays uh, for all offline modes, franchise, be a pro, and play now, and, and the others. Um, so regardless of whether you're AI or a human controlled team, you're gonna get all of the gold replays. We also brought back the true broadcast camera. Uh, consumers demanded that we bring that one back. So uh, now we have two distinct true broadcast cameras. In the Huge win. If you were in my streams when I ran my GM connected sim league over the summer, you know that we talked about it quite a bit. The fact that, you know, you couldn't even see a replay just immediately went right to the next goal. And I think that in the online way that you play the game, that's fine. People that play franchise mode want a full immersion. And the fact that they've actually allowed us to get replays again is a massive W. So big win there. However, I keep feeling like this is a trend that keeps happening where they remove things from the game because it appears that the in interest level is starting to die down and they want to put focuses on innovating and bringing up new things but then what ends up happening is the player base doesn't really resonate with the changes and then after a few years we just bring back exactly what they took away which in my opinion i don't think you can ever complain about them bringing back something that everyone wanted obviously you can be upset that they took it away in the first place but don't be mad and upset that it's now back in the game it's now back in the game be happy about that i just think of so many features that early nhl games had kind of pioneered and they went away from instead of trying to innovate those features and trying to kind of reinvent the wheel, and then they end up just kind of falling flat. I just think like more and more that it appears that just either the demographic or the people that play hockey and are interested in hockey aren't super interested in the gimmicky things, and they really just want almost identical to what the real experience is. When it comes to other sports games, there's a lot more swagger and things like that. And I'm not saying I want a boring game. Hockey is not boring. It is the best sport in the world. I just think that when you play it or watch it as like a viewer, there's a certain way that people enjoy it. And again, maybe I'm just old man yelling at a cloud. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below of the new presentation changes for NHL 24. And I'll see you next time. Have a good one.